Hey everyone, Mark the Movie Man here. Welcome to the final cut. And today we're taking a look at an independent horror film. I know, big surprise. That's right, we're looking at The Summer of Massacre. Now, according to the book, the uh, cover here, it's the Guinness Book of World Records official holder of largest body count for a slasher film at 155. Though this is debatable on what counts as body count, all right? Now, Joe Castro brings us in a horror anthology story. In this one, we have a number number of uh, stories. We've got the story of Rage, which is about a guy who gets his ass kicked while running, and I mean to the point of where his eyes sticking out and just gets mutilated, right? Well, he actually wakes up from this and survives and goes on a rampage, killing anyone in his path for well, apparently no particular reason outside of just angry at what happened to him. Uh, and so it was an interesting story there. I, I did kind of like the concept of it, though the execution again was was weak in there. Uh, Lump has the joy of a cameo for from Brink Stevens. Yes, the Scream Queen herself shows up as the mother of a girl who has this very large lump. She's a very handicapped girl. Well, she's got a sister who is not handicapped, who doesn't like all the attention that her handicapped sister gets, and we see the conflict there and some gruesome events that unfold in that film. Again, I really like the concept of that film, and it was great seeing Brink Stevens on the screen. Now, you also had Son of the Boogeyman, which was an interesting concept. The guy kind of has a shady past, and he wants to let his girl know before they get any further about how his mom <coughs> had, had basically gotten violated by the boogeyman. Okay, uh, interesting concept again. I liked uh, the idea of the story, and even that uh, the performances there were all right. And then you have Burn, which a, uh, a religious uh, ministry camp. They're out there, you know, with a bunch of uh, uh, very religious uh, folk are haunted and tormented and, well, have nasty things done to them by a uh, pair of gay firefighters. So some social commentary there as well. Uh, I like the concept of each of these stories. What I didn't like is really some of the direction, but most importantly, what hits you in the face right off the bat is the bad CGI gore. Now, you can tell there's some really good practical gore behind the CGI overlaid gore, okay? But the CGI there is so bad and so distracting that it really takes you out of the film and you can't really get into these stories which could otherwise be even more entertaining had they just stuck with practical effects. I know it's a low budget film but you didn't need the CGI in there. Could have kept just the gore practical effect gores, been acceptable and probably a lot more enjoyable. Also folks, with it being an independent horror film you might think, oh well there's got to be some TNA in there. Well there is kind of, but not in the way you expect. Not really TNA, more like a D. Yes, there's a couple of full frontal shots of males going on and one nude female corpse in the background swinging on a hook. Alright, now like I said, what can, you know, can be considered a body count in a slasher film. Do you count just bodies laying there versus people getting killed? It is up for debate. So even the Guinness Book of World Records hook might uh, pull some uh, horror fans in, but I warn you that I think there are a lot less actual kills on screen. Didn't do the count. I know some other people have, but it is... Uh, it doesn't seem to be a 155 to be sure. Folks, I, I think you can skip this one. You know, I, I, I really respect what they were trying to go for, but it was just poorly executed, directed at a breakneck speed to the, and, and the CGI, poor CGI, really took away from it. Just stick with the practical, man. Practical works. And low budget, you're accepting a little less good looking practical effects on a lower budget than doing really poor CGI effects. I'll take practical over that any day. And don't forget, folks, at MadisonHorror.net, there is the Madison Horror Film Festival coming up in November. Go to their uh, link down below. If you've got a film, you're an independent filmmaker, you want to get it out, get it to them. I believe they're still taking submissions. And also check out the Oshkosh Horror Film Festival as well. Folks, independent horror, independent films is where we're going to get our original content from. So you've got to support them in any way, shape, form you can. Uh, I've really started to grow to find some gems in there, and I hope to bring some more of those gems to you. Until next time, though, keep that ticket stuff.